Have you ever wondered what's the backstory behind Dan Fogelberg's same old Lang Syne? Released in the late 1980s, this song skyrocketed to number 9 on the Billboard Hot 100 within months. Fast forward to today, and every Christmas Eve, you're likely to catch it on the radio. But recently, the song's making waves again, and it's not just because of its catchy tune. Turns out, there's a real-life story behind this iconic song of two former lovebirds accidentally meeting on Christmas Eve. So, if you're curious to know the full story behind it, make sure to watch this video until the end. Let's begin! Before we dive into the world of music, one name that stands out is Daniel Grayling Fogelberg. He was an American singer, songwriter, and multi-instrumentalist. He rose to fame with a series of soft rock hits in the 1980s, with tunes like Longer, 1980, Same Old Lang Syne in 1981, and Leader of the Band in 1982. Born in Peoria, Illinois, Fogelberg was the youngest of three sons to Margaret and Lawrence Peter Fogelberg. His mother, a classically trained pianist and Scottish immigrant, and his father, of Swedish descent and a band director at various schools, played significant roles in shaping his musical journey. Fogelberg often talked about his early days when his father let him quote-unquote conduct the Bradley University School Band at the young age of four. In 1981, he released Leader of the Band, a touching tribute to his father. Fogelberg's musical ability wasn't limited to singing and songwriting. Armed with a Mel Bay course book, he taught himself to play a Hawaiian slide guitar, a gift from his grandfather. By the age of 14, he was already rocking out in a band called The Clan, covering the Beatles. His second venture, The Coachman, even released a single with tracks written by Fogelberg in 1967. This guy was making waves early on. After graduating from Woodruff High School in 1969, Fogelberg entered into theater arts and painting at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. The music bug, however, took center stage, and he began his solo acoustic gigs at a local coffee house called The Red Herring. Discovered by Irving Azoff, Fogelberg found himself in Nashville, Tennessee, where he polished his skills as a session musician and recorded his debut album, Home Free, in 1972. Despite a mediocre initial response, the album eventually achieved platinum status. Moving on, in 1974, the Joe Walsh-produced album Souvenirs marked a turning point with the hit Part of the Plan. Fogelberg's success streak continued with gold and platinum albums like Captured Angel 1975 and Netherlands 1977. Collaborating with jazz flautist Tim Weisberg and twin sons of different mothers in 1978, Fogelberg found commercial success with the hit The Power of Gold. As the late 70s rolled into the 80s, Fogelberg reached new heights. Phoenix from 1979 and The Innocent Age from 1981 were both massive successes. Longer, a track from Phoenix, became a pop hit, reaching number two on the charts. The Innocent Age album, A Double Delight, featured four of his biggest hits, Same Old Lang Syne, Hard to Say, Leader of the Band, and Run for the Roses. Among them, Same Old Lang Syne is a timeless track that tells a story we all get. It's like Fogelberg's way of turning personal moments into music magic. So, in this heartfelt ballad, Fogelberg walks us through a chance encounter between two ex-lovers. They bump into each other unexpectedly, and suddenly they're transported back to the good old days. They chat, laugh about old memories, catch up on their lives, and clink glasses to the present. But here's the kicker. After this nostalgic meetup, they part ways. The song wraps up with Fogelberg watching his first love fade away into the snow, which, by the way, turns into rain. Symbolic much? It's like a mature acceptance of why they had to go their separate ways. And guess what? This heart-touching tale isn't just a song, it's Fogelberg's life. He spilled the beans, saying, quote, In 1975, I was home in Peoria, Illinois, visiting my family for Christmas. I went to a convenience store to pick up some whipping cream to make Irish coffees with, and quite unexpectedly ran into an old high school girlfriend. The rest of the song tells the story. Now, let's talk about the characters in this love story. The leading lady? Jill Grolick Neanderson. She kept mum about their story until after Fogelberg's passing in 2007 due to prostate cancer. Back in high school from 1965 to 1969, they were the on-again, off-again couple. Post-graduation, life happened. Grolick went the education route, while Fogelberg chose the singer-songwriter path. On Christmas Eve 1975, they crossed paths in a Peoria grocery store. 
The encounter turned into the inspiration for Same Old Lang Syne. Now, here's the punchline. It took until the song's 40th anniversary for Jill Grolick to step into the spotlight and spill the beans. She even said, I am so glad that Dan was a part of my life. Grolick recalls that magical night on December 24th, 1975, like it was yesterday. The setting was a convenience store a few blocks north of Woodruff High School, located on top of Abington Hill in Peoria. If you're curious, that store is now the Short Stop Food Mart at 1302 East Fry Avenue. And the street? Well, since 2008, it proudly goes by the name Fogelberg Parkway. Now, let's set the scene. Picture a chilly Christmas Eve, the only open store in town, and a six-pack of beer keeping them cozy in a car. Sound familiar? You bet. They sipped, reminisced, pondered life, and then went their separate ways. Oh, and here's a quirky detail. Their little meetup left family and friends a bit puzzled. I mean, who takes more than two hours to track down eggnog or whipping cream during the holidays? Now, fast forward to years later, and Grolick is cruising to work when she hears the song on the radio. Cue the deja vu moment. Oh my gosh, that really happened! The song is pretty spot on, with just a couple of tweaks. Her eyes are green, not blue, and her husband was a PE teacher, not an architect. And here's the kicker, the personal line in the song that goes, She would have liked to say she loved the man, but she didn't like to lie foreshadowed Grolick's divorce from the P.E. teacher. But here's a fun twist. Folgerberg might have held off releasing the song until she was officially free, or so the grapevine says. In 1980, Grolick tied the knot with her second husband, Jim Grolick, and they set up shop in St. Louis. She's now rocking it as a second grade teacher at a local elementary school. Even without the song playing on repeat during the holidays, Grolick holds on to her memories of Folgerberg with great warmth. I'll always have a place in my heart for Dan. Dan would be a very special person to me, even without the song. As we talk about Fogelberg's life, we find that he was not just a musician, but a storyteller who bared his soul through each chord. His impact on the world of soft rock is immeasurable, leaving behind a legacy that continues to touch hearts and evoke emotions. And that wraps up the amazing story of Dan Fogelberg and his heartfelt music. If you enjoyed this story, why not give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more cool tales about your favorite tunes? We've got plenty more music history content coming your way. Thanks for watching.